Well, good afternoon and welcome to Pacifica. It's really great to be able to be together, uh, even if it's a little bit different. Welcome to our giant classroom. Uh, you're sitting in desks that our students sit in. You're gonna, you, you see a little bit about our ethos. We want engagement, we want you involved, and so to the extent that we can have you engaged and involved today, uh, welcome to the, giant, the, most, the largest Pacifica classroom you will ever find yourself in. Uh, my name is David O'Neill, as Bouzet said. I have the pleasure of being Pacifica, or serving as Pacifica's founding head of school. And as we get started, I just wanna, I just wanna share with our, our young people uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, why in the world did I get into education? Why am I here today? Uh, why am I a part of this group of, of learners in this community? And really, when I was your age, 13, 14 years old, and I was getting ready to go to high school, there was a, a, a fair bit of excitement, but there was also a little bit of trepidation, right? Of, hey, well, what is this? And new place and new people and different experiences. And anybody relate to that? You don't have to put your hand up. But if you do, friends, you're, you're in good company, right? So there I am, 14. I'm a good student. I know how to get good grades. And I was a good baseball player. And that's what I did. I went to high school, and I got good grades, and I played baseball. I even won a CIF title. But as I look back, I missed out on so much. The high school years are some of the most formidable, beautiful, wonderful, exciting years of our lives. What happens during these years for you, what happens in high school, it matters. And here's the truth, you matter. Each of you right here, right now, I, I want to tell you, you are capable of more than you think you are today. But we have something in our society that I think is a problem is that we don't think highly enough of young people. We don't think that you're capable enough. And I'm here to tell you today, Pacifica exists to breathe life into you, to remind you that you are capable than far more than you think you are as you sit in that chair today. And that we've assembled an incredible group of educators who are serious about their faith, who are passionate about young people, who love what they do, and they are here because they want to breathe life into you. They want that at the end of these four years, at the end of receiving a proper education, that you will be a better person. Now let's talk about this a little bit here. There's a question that nobody asked me, probably until I was in my mid-20s, but certainly not when I was 14. And that is, for each of you, in four, four and a half years, you're all going to stand at a stage something like this. It'll be bigger. It's probably going to look a little more like this. And the question I have for you at this point in your life is, when you are here, when you're standing at this stage, who is it that you want to be? I want you just to take a, take a moment and think about that. When you're up here with me, hopefully, or somebody else, as Bouzet prayed, who is it that you want to be? And this matters because at the end of the day, a Pacifica education is not about these four years, but it's about changing the way you think and the way that you live so that goodness and joy will follow you the next 60 years. And why is this so important? Because we believe that you, the young people in this room, how you think and how you live can absolutely change our world. It's gonna start first with you. It's gonna go into your home to go into the marketplace and into the homes that you create back into the church. And by us pouring into you during these formative and foundational years in your life, you are gonna go out and you're going to have great effect in the world. And that means a great deal to us. So that's why we're here. We want you to come here so we can partner with you for your good and the good of the world to Christ's glory. Amen. Now, for us, this all starts with one thing. Everything at Pacifica, it starts with this. This is our purpose. There is nothing we do that doesn't fall within this statement. And this is who we are, Pacifica Christian. We are a liberal arts high school. We're going to tell you what that means today. And we're devoted to teaching young men and women, people like you, to think critically and wisely, to instill and feel and experience heartfelt joy, and to grow and to serve in lives of faith, character, and service to the glory of God. That is why we exist. And so when you come here for four years, here's what we're going to do. First and foremost, we're going to get in a classroom, we're going to put you in a circle, and we're going to begin to ask you questions to help you grow, not just in knowledge, not just knowing things, but to grow in wisdom, that deep knowledge that transforms your person and everybody around you, that gives you what I would say over time, joy. That's what we want for you, joy. 
that you would find joy both in the classroom but in your own life is you get to explore the world God created. You get to understand yourself. You get to see how these things connect. And so you're going to grow in wisdom with your faculty and your coaches and your staff. We're going to seek to experience and produce joy in your life. Friends, we want to develop you in your faith. And I know that maybe not everybody here uh, comes from the Christian church or has experienced faith communities. I want you to know you're welcome. You do not have to be a Christian to be at Pacifica. And at the same time, we take this incredibly seriously. We want students to grow in their faith in Christ, to understand the scripture, to apply it to their life and to live it out into the world. But we also think it's really good that we do this in a community that not everybody always agrees with us. But we take both of those things seriously and we want to grow each student in their faith and understanding of Christ in the world. This hopefully builds in us something of character. I'm gonna actually use the word virtue because it is virtue that will produce goodness in your life. These commitments to things bigger than you and to people other than you, to finding yourself obedient to God and, and, and the scripture that we think will produce a character that will produce a joy and a hope. Now all of this is that we're gonna grow you in knowledge, we're gonna grow you in wisdom, we're gonna give you new skills and a bigger vision for the world, and why? Because you're not gonna stay here. We get you for four years, that's it. But you're gonna leave 18, remember that stage I just showed you? That'll be you in four years. And you're gonna be staying there and we're gonna blow Triton's trumpet. And there'll be a thousand people with bells ringing their bells and we're gonna send you out into the world for what? To do good work in service to others and to your home, to the church, to the marketplace. Our whole lives are an act of service. And we find our lives as an act of service and gratitude, it connects back to that joy that we talk about. So four years from now, actually four years and some change, we're all gonna be in a room and we're gonna invite you into adulthood. We're going to sit in a very intimate place, something like this actually, just you and your parents. We're gonna recognize your achievements, your good works. We're gonna put the Pacifica medal around your neck, which friends, this is not a participation trophy. Coming to Pacifica is serious business. We're serious about you. And what we're gonna to do together is serious. And when you get to the end of it, you're gonna stand at this place as I or Dr. Robertson put this medal and you are going to have a pride that is new to you because you've done something worthy of great celebration. We're also gonna recognize that you're now 18 years old and you're not this young person in front of us. You are a peer alongside us and we are walking together on this road of life. 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 30 year olds, and now new 18 year olds together as adults. We do this together and then we're gonna celebrate you for all that we are worth. Celebration is foundational to thinking and living well and it's foundational to this place. And so we will celebrate with your friends and others uh, and this is one of the most beautiful moments, uh, I think, in a young person's life, at least as it relates to Pacifica. And we're going to do this together. And then you're going to go out, and we're going to stay friends. Last week, I had dinner with two students who I first met back in 2002. And now we're having dinner, talking about their lives. I'm meeting their children. Uh, and they're talking about the businesses they're creating and the joy that they're experiencing. And so we're going to keep this, this going, right? It's not just four years. We're in it for a long time with you. As a reminder, we are here not to talk about uh, much else other than how to produce joy and goodness in your life. That is our aim. That's why we exist. We're not a perfect place and it will be done imperfectly, but we are going to pursue it together. Now, as we expand our base, last year was our largest freshman class. This incoming class will be also our largest freshman class. Uh, we need to grow. And so you're sitting here in the Triton Event Center. It's where we have chapel and advisories and, and all school meetings and color, uh, color team experiences. Now, what's going to happen, though, is we've, maybe most of you know this, we've bought a building just 40 yards this way. It's at the end of 15th Street. And this fall, we're going to transform that building into the new Center for Learning for Pacifica. And this really is a tremendous place. Now, keep in mind, everything we're going to talk about you can do it anywhere. We can do it under trees. But there's something about giving you a proper and good home to grow up and mature into adults. As you go around this building, you'll go to the, to the back of the Pacifica Terrace. Now, this was going to be the Pacifica Terrace. It was a beautiful 2,000 square foot deck. Uh, we decided to extend it further because you needed more space. Uh, that deck goes all the way out to the property line. Uh, it's about 3,000 square feet. And you're going to learn about study halls. This is where you're going to sit and read the greatest books ever written. It's where you're going to have discussions about goodness and justice and, and faith. It's where you're going to grow up. Right here on the other side of this, this is the Pacifica Atrium where we all spend life together, whether it's at lunch or breaks or passing periods. And all the while, we're staring at beauty. 
You'll notice in our classrooms there's paintings everywhere. It's because we want you surrounded by beauty, about things that are good, right? Well, as we stare at San Clemente and San Pedro all day and God's beauty there, I think that will also form us. As we head into the building, we want to tell you about our mission. We want to do life together. That's why we're here. We've fought for our students and for their good for the last nine months, seeking every way we can to be together. And our building is designed to show what we value, which is you and us doing life together for your good. As you go upstairs, and I remember that view, I told you we've dedicated the most beautiful space to the building so that you can have access to it at any time at all periods. Now, through this building, there's seven learning studios, which is where we do the good work of asking good questions and reading great books. There's five new labs, two biochem labs, three STEAM labs, science, technology, engineering, and the arts. And this building will open this fall. It's going to be tremendous. And what we're looking for is students who want what we're about who want these ideas, who want to be a part of a community and a part of doing something and being something and creating something good so that four years from now you can give it to somebody else. It's all about culture and we're inviting you into it. So with that, Dr. Robertson is going to come up and tell you more about Pacifica's culture uh, and our academic practices by telling you a little about our students' experience. So thank you, Dr. Robertson. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Well, as a principal, I'm often asked the question, uh, where do your alumni go to college? But the better question is, how do they do once they get there? And so I, I've made it a habit uh, that whenever I talk to uh, our, our alumni, uh, once, once they're freshmen in college, I like to ask them, how did Pacifica prepare you? How are you actually doing? And so I wanted to share with you just uh, a few conversations uh, with, with students. The first one, this is, this is Corinne Carlson. Um, this isn't this year, as you might imagine, uh, but she was a freshman at Notre Dame last year, and she was able to share with me conversations she was having with professors that led to those professors inviting her to, to um, dinners with, um, with a variety of uh, senators and, and um, writers that she, she got to be in rooms, and, and, and she was telling me these stories, and I said, what does that have to do with Pacifica necessarily? And she said, well, the conversations that I had at Pacifica in the classroom and getting the practice of having relationships with adults, I can carry that on with me into Notre Dame. And it's opened doors and it's opened opportunities for had discussions about life, about faith, about politics, about whatever it is with some of the best minds in the world. Um, Hunter Alexander, who is at Cal Berkeley, uh, I asked him the same question. I said, how are you doing at Berkeley? And, and he, he started to tell me this story about an upper division history class that, that he was taking as a freshman. And his history professor pulled him aside and said, I want you to know that uh, in this class, you are the best writer in terms of connecting various texts and ideas and synthesizing them into, into uh, a, a, a thesis and a point. And um, that, that was, he was comparing them to juniors and seniors. Hunter also shared uh, that he was involved in uh, intramural soccer. He was on a leadership team in his dorm. Uh, he was part of a Chinese study group. Um, Hunter uh, was and continues to thrive both socially and academically uh, at Berkeley. Lindsay Mull uh, went to Westmont College and when I asked her the same question she began to share that she had been talking with her peers about this like like how is your high school experience uh, translated into college and she showed that most of her high school uh, sorry most of her friends in college talked about their high school experiences as being ones that were not positive they weren't helpful in fact they were they were bad uh, in, in the end but she, she said this one line, she said, but when I reflect on my high school experience, I like the person I have become. And that's really what we're, we're after. And because at Pacifica, we invite every student into an education that is for all of life. And it starts with purpose, it comes to life in culture, uh, it's, it's formed in our practices, and it results in the Pacifica person. And we call this lifelong learning process the Pacifica Continuum. And I want to share with you some of the nuts and the bolts uh, about how we learn at Pacifica. And I, I want to start with um, just by 
meeting the graduation requirements of Pacifica. Just by doing what every student does here in their coursework, you actually exceed the, the requirements for admission into UCs and, and colleges across the nation. Uh, we have a variety of types of classes at Pacifica. All of our courses are college prep. Uh, we have also have honors courses, AP courses, and dual credit. Dual credit are courses that we partner with universities such as Texas University or College, uh, Colorado Christian University um, and our, we, we teach those classes on our campus. They're taught by our teachers. It's our curriculum and their department chairs and their academic deans approve those course guides and our teachers and then those colleges give credit. So the students taking those classes here actually get college credit. So when a student graduates um, and goes into college from Pacifica, they can take that credit with them and it transfers on a University of Texas or Colorado Christian uh, transcript. And I, we've had students who, in, when they combine their AP and dual credit classes, are transferring between 30 and 40 uh, units. We also have um, a dynamic college counseling office. The goal of our college counseling office is to partner with parents to uh, find the best fit academically, spiritually, socially, emotionally for every student. And they've had tremendous success. We do this in a variety of ways. Uh, and Jennifer Braze, our Dean of College Counseling, is here if you're interested in talking the specifics in the program. But the result is that our students have got into um, big public universities in the South, Ivy League schools back East, Christian uh, liberal arts colleges all across uh, the nation. And what that displays is just kids, every student has a different place that's going to be a great fit for them. And that's our goal is finding that, that place for each student. We also know that students need balance. They need to put in the time to prepare for, for college. They need to put in the time to study. And so we give each student a 75 minute study hall every day. And in that study hall, um, as a freshman, we actually have a learning specialist who checks in with each freshman each week. They help them with their, their, um, their, their planner. We have a school planner that she helps them with and helps them with executive functioning, ensuring that they are planning their week and organizing their, their time. As they grow into sophomores, juniors, and seniors, they get more and more freedom. They have the, the freedom, as, as you saw uh, the pictures, to go outside and be reading uh, when the weather is nice, which it is, as you guys know, about 99 percent of the time. So it's, it's a great um, kind of break in the middle of the day because we know if you're coming to Pacifica you're likely going to be involved in a co-curricular whether it's theater or whether it's the, um, uh, athletics or whatever it may be. Each student is assigned an advisor uh, and advisory groups are groups of 10. They're either all males or all females and in those groups uh, they meet weekly and where the ad advisor is leading conversations on school culture, uh, matters of faith, um, academic check-ins. Um, last week we talked about screen time and how to manage that well. These are these is basically a, a mentor, an adult on campus who ensures that your your student is is known. We have a variety of types of assemblies at Pacifica. Some are pep rallies. We have student-led announcements every week so, so everybody knows uh, what's happening in terms of student life, um, college counseling, athletics, and all the rest as students uh, share that information. We, have, um, we also bring in uh, guest speakers. We've had senators. We've had college presidents. We've had mathematicians. One time we had the GM of the Lakers. Whatever it is, we have compelling people that are that we invite on campus to get uh, to, to to share compelling ideas and and their work. There's a variety of ways to grow in your faith at Pacifica. Um, for one, there's biblical scholarship in the classroom. Uh, but there's also the study of English and science and math and history and art. And as they study those subjects, taking into account the idea that all truth is God's truth. And in this way, our students learn to think Christianly about, about all things. They develop their spiritual and intellectual virtues. Uh, and in doing this, they're free to think and live well. And, and by the way, students, um, Mr. O'Neill mentioned a couple minutes ago, uh, there, are, there are families here who are Christians or families who aren't. And I would say that families who aren't Christians, this is an opportunity for a student to consider what it would be to live a life of character and to live a life of virtue. We also have chapels. These are, are weekly. Uh, this is our chapel, by the way. They've, they've put a basketball gym inside of it. But we have a weekly chapel in here. 
This is a time where we preach from the Bible. We sing together, we pray together, uh, but it is focused on the Word of God. The most important ingredients of a school are, are its ideas and its people. And, and most important to, to the student are the teachers. And our teachers are so incredibly valuable. And from the start of Pacifica, we have ensured that there are five attributes of each teacher. Our questions and our interviews revolve around these things. And so each teacher here has these. One, they're substantial in their Christian faith. They're involved and engaged in, in their, in their uh, church. They're well educated in their field that they're teaching. They're experts in that field. They are skilled in the art and the craft of, of teaching. They love high school students, and they're committed to Pacifica's unique mission. These people are hard to find, to be honest, but they are incredible. They love this place, um, and I'm so appreciative of them. And I'm going to invite one of them up. Um, Eric Balmer is a humanities teacher at Pacifica, and give him a round of applause because he's an awesome guy. Thank you, Mr. Balmer. Um, hi, I'm Eric Balmer. I'm one of the humanities teachers here. And I've been asked to sort of briefly address how the humanities um, underwrites or promotes human flourishing. As I was sitting over there, I thought of this analogy. Um, you may have had an experience when you were younger of being at the beach, or older, and, uh, but this is usually a young phenomenon. You're in the water, you're playing in the waves, and a wave comes and it lifts you up and then you're ready to have your feet settle on the ground again and you can't find the ground and you know you go into like a quick panic and your you know your feet kick like that and then lo and behold the waves go down and you find your footing um, that is sort of how I see what we do at Pacifica um, find some kind of footing some sort of scaffolding something to push off from in life and the reason that that's important is, in, in a previous job, I was uh, teaching at the collegiate level for about eight years, and I noticed that the students lacked scaffolding. They lacked something to push off from. So if I asked them a very simple question, like, do, do you want to be good? They would say yes. But then if I asked further questions, well, why do you want to be good? What does it mean to be good? Uh, they, they were on their heels and they had a hard time figuring out how to sort of lean into that question and begin to answer it. So at Pacifica, what we're attempting to do in the humanities department is to, and the other departments as well, is, is sort of give students this scaffolding. The, the thing about it at this point in history where we're at is what we have um, isn't automatic. I th a lot of people think that what we have is the default mode of human existence and it's not. It took a long time to get where we're at. So things like natural rights and property rights and due process and separation of powers or even deeper questions like what does it mean to be a human being? Uh, is there right and wrong? How do you know it? Etc. 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 What is justice? These are questions that we talk about. These are questions that we explore. Um, and so when your student comes to this school, and if we're doing our job and we're leaning into our passions, your students are going to go into college and they're going to have this scaffolding. They're going to have this, this scaffolding and these great goods, these great societal and human goods and concepts that we have gotten from the Judeo-Christian story, and they're going to understand that, and it's going to give them something to push off from. So that's what we attempt to do for your students. That's our passion. That's what we believe in, and that's what Pacific is about. Now I'm going to pass the mic to Anthony Rinaldi, a science teacher. I teach uh, a number of science classes here, as well as um, one of the math courses right now. The, the first thing Balmer did when he came up here was and he said he thought of the, the, the analogy, but he, was, he told a story, right? Um, we, we all love stories, right? We love episodes, right? Now, right now, for me, it's The Mandalorian Season 2, right? Um, and Disney's mean, and they're only putting out one episode a week. And so now I'm left with being stuck after that episode wondering what happens next, right? 
stories bring us in and pull us into being curious, being to finding out more, right? That's, that's why we love them. That's why we go to the movies. That's why we read fiction, right? It's why we read nonfiction about things we don't know about yet. Um, and we try to cultivate that here in the Pacifica with the idea that curiosity is what drives conversation for us. Um, that looks like a lot of different things in a lot of different classes, but at the core of what it is, is trying to take the, the innate curiosity and desire to know more that we have and translate that into a classroom. Um, and that doesn't always happen, and it definitely doesn't happen when we just sit and lecture all the time. Um, that doesn't happen if I just have to listen to someone day in and day out without talking. Um, or without engaging in some way. And I get to do that a couple different ways in my science classes. I think my engineering class is my favorite side of this. Um, we've got, um, over here, we've got you know, a tower that students built. We've got uh, a uh, camera being dropped from a drone. But all of that started with asking questions. So the first thing at the beginning of every unit we'll do is give them a design challenge. And the first step in those design challenges is usually, here's a pad of sticky notes, start putting down ideas. As many ideas as you can get. I, I, I encourage them to burn through as many sticky notes as they possibly can um, until their tables are just these flurries of multiple colors. And right, so right now they're doing a redesign of a flashlight. And so those might look like, what's the power source? What's the color? What's the shape, right? Um, it, and anything you can think of, just put it on. Don't, don't think about the idea twice. If it comes to your mind, put it down, go, right? Get your ideas out. That first five minutes is the last time students will ever be working alone on anything in that class, though. Because as soon as that ends, they start taking those ideas and they organize them into what they, we call mind maps. And we get this big, colorful visual of where everyone's ideas sit together. After that, you know, they start sketching, they compare each other's ideas, they modify them, they come back and forth, right? They, they try to see, okay, how did these ideas come to this picture? Oh, hey, you had this idea, but I stole it and I did this very different thing with it, right? But it comes from not just taking our own ideas and our curiosity, but the curiosity of those around us, right? Um, in engineering, we make a big deal of, you know, it's never just you and your ideas alone. And more broadly, that's not how it is in any case, right? In a family, it's never one person's ideas and nothing else. In a marriage, it's never that. In an English class, it's never that. Um, in you know, your, a workspace, it's never just you. So we get this collaboration of ideas and perspectives that ultimately come out to something that none of them imagined at the beginning um, and becomes something tangible and buildable and really fun. And here's the thing, at the end of the day, they still learn engineering practices. They still learn physics. They still learn how to solve a linear equation. But they're doing it in a way that makes them more engaged and naturally curious about the process by having them start with questions. A lot of those questions outside of the math classroom, math or science, um, happen in conversations that are set in circles in these uh, rolling chairs that you're all in. And Logan, a junior, is going to come up and talk to you guys about uh, why we do that and why that's important. Thank you, Mr. Rinaldi. Um, my name is Logan Bray, and I am the junior admissions prefect underneath Sarah Parsons here at Pacifica. At Pacifica, we believe that learning blooms in connected and dynamic spaces, hence discussions. This unique approach is emphasized in literature and history, but is not limited to those subjects. The Socratic method is integrated within the math and science departments as well, teaching us how to be versatile in our approaches to learning. The environment of discussions has taught me not only how to thoughtfully articulate ideas regarding the works of Plato or Hamlet, but also how to skillfully disagree with someone in a respectful and formal manner. This curriculum prepares us for the future, an intentional goal at Pacifica. And intentionality occurs throughout the very materials we discuss down to the chairs that we sit in, which you are actually sitting in right now. So when entering into Pacifica, discussions can be extremely intimidating. Whether you contain the understandable nerves or embody complete confidence, both of us belong. Our presence matters. The support system provided here on campus brings forth assurance and ease to even the most timid of students. 
you become confident speaking here because you know that you're being heard. In contrast, however, if you're anything like me and enjoy talking and often spilling em filling empty space with somewhat mindless chatter, discussions pushes you to think critically and really analyze the thoughts and ideas of other people. When I started here as a freshman, I was consumed by only my ideas and thoughts. And being more comfortable in the Socratic environment, I had to learn to set aside my pride and actually listen. Once I began to truly listen to my fellow classmates, I realized that discussions are actually not all about talking. The act of listening and learning from my fellow peers drastically changed my outlook on the books and topics we would discuss in life, and honestly how I interacted with people. I'm becoming a more vulnerable, hospitable, and compassionate person thanks to discussions here. This being said, before we graduate, we will have spent 50,000 minutes in discussion. Now, 50,000 minutes probably seems very overwhelming, and honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, it's a lot of time, like 50,000, it's a lot, it's a huge number. But with the amount of discussions we actually have in our classes, this number is not difficult to hit. It's basically down to the chairs we sit in. These chairs are aesthetically pleasing, so nice, like very comfortable. I'm sure you all think that they're comfortable. If you do, raise a hand. Yeah, that's what I thought, me too. They are very practical for discussions and group activities at Pacifica. They can move, they can spin, they have wheels on the bottom, like you can scoot in them, you can push them. They're, they're quite fun. But for discussions, they're especially adaptive because they move in the formation of a circle, which is how we actually discuss in class. So up on the slide is a map of what the first discussion looked like here at Pacifica, a freshman class. And I'm pretty sure you all can tell who the teacher is. And it's HB, Reverend Butler, who is one of the fantastic English teachers here at Pacifica. But as you can see from the map, a lot of the students are mainly talking directly to him, and some of them aren't even talking at all. Now, when we actually take out the people who don't talk in discussion, that's what a lot of normal high school classrooms look like, and that's not what Pacifica wants. Now, this is a map three weeks later of the exact same class. And as you can see, all of the students spoke at least once, and they're not only talking with Reverend Butler, but they're conversing with each other, which is the main goal of discussions. This m probably was not the perfect discussion. They probably didn't come to a unanimous answer, but it's progression, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for progress and growth, and this growth is beautiful. If this is the growth that we see in three weeks of discussion here at Pacifica, imagine what growth looks like in four years. Discussions have changed my life, and I cannot wait to be in discussion with every single one of you one day. Now, Ms. Batstone, one of the most fantastic English teachers here, will speak about formative relationships. Thank you. That, that's a picture from an alternate universe, <laughs> wherein I was an alien space invader, along with Mr. Bellum. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be able to repeat that experience again. Thank you, Logan, for introducing us to the world of discussions. I am Laura Batstone, and I am privileged to be the English Department Chair at Pacifica, and I am privileged to spend thousands of minutes in discussion with our students. I want to talk about the way relationships are foundational to how we operate here. You may wonder, how is it possible to get young people to have that level of discourse with each other and their teacher for such a sustained amount of time? And my answer is that our deep relationships with each other inspire us to go beyond and push us to invest deeply in the academic process. One of the most magical experiences that I have had with Pacifica students was on our international trip to Rome two years ago. We spent nearly two weeks wandering through medieval cathedrals, dancing on Roman piazzas, and eating far too much gelato. I was able to experience some of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life alongside my students. We saw each other in fully human moments, for better or for worse, and we stood side by side in awe of history. 
I cannot overstate the impact that this had when we returned to the classroom. It translated into mutual respect and understanding and patience in discussions because we had seen each other in a different situation. Fortunately, these relationships don't only grow in the Italian countryside. You don't have to attend the international trip to have that sort of relationship with your peers and your teachers at Pacifica. At lunch, during advisory groups, sporting events, art galleries, teachers and students are building bonds together through shared experiences and through successes and failures. When we have those shared experiences outside the classroom, the time inside the classroom is enriched. For example, at June's graduation, I said goodbye to some amazing women who have been in my advisory group for four years. We've prayed for each other, and we've built amazing memories together, and I'm still in touch with them and plan to be for many years to come. In the classroom, that advisory group translated into trusting each other, listening to each other, and extending a bit more grace to each other because we knew each other's humanity, and we had gotten to know their souls a bit. At Pacifica, the mutual investment between teachers and students is unlike anything I've seen at any other institution. One of our favorite annual ways to encourage these relationships is through our annual retreat, which is something that is not easily forgotten. So let's travel back in time to what seems like an alternate universe um, when we all dressed up in silly costumes in the Arizona mountains at our annual retreat.
Hello, everyone. I'm Lennox Schillereff, the AS president. I take pride in my role to help organize student life events that cultivate relationships. These aren't relationships just within one grade or within one person. It's about the entire Pacifica community and our life together. In our life together, we work hard, play hard, and take risks. This is what Pacifica is about. Through these opportunities we have here, we become known by each other, by our teachers, by our classmates. We form these relationships and encourage the people around us to take part in the community. And with this encouragement, we dive in. 83% of the students take place and they participate in a sport. 65% participate in the arts. 55% are involved in student leadership, which makes up 95% of Pacifica's student body being involved in some way. These are big numbers. We want to take action and make a difference at the school we love. So we take advantage of the opportunities available to us. Now, I have a special place in my heart for the leadership aspect, being the head of Associated Students. And in this, we plan and organize events to make the student life here at Pacifica the best it can be. Within this, we have the Executive Council, which is a smaller group of students that are by my side to help make all the AS ideas come to life. Similar to an internship program, we have the Prefect Board, which gives students the opportunity to work hands-on with all of the faculty leaders here on campus, like the head of school, the principal, the academic dean, and more. Lastly, our school is full of various clubs, meetings, and classes, all offered to truly enhance the leadership ability of the students here. Because all of the students are so involved, each of us has a deep sense of pride for being at Pacifica. We want to represent the school, and we want to do it well. We participate in the events offered each month, and we love it. This starts off in August with First Friday. On the first Friday of school, we come together to celebrate the beginning of our school year. We watch a volleyball game, we get food, we have a bounce house, and my favorite, the dunk tank. And this is not an ordinary dunk tank. This is one the teachers get into. I have definitely seen Mr. O'Neill go down a few times. In September, we go to the all-school retreat, where we get to spend three days bonding and forming the deep relationships that Pacifica is known for. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go away this year, but we still spent the days together enjoying Sun and Catalina, having freshman meet and greets, dedication, all-school bonfires, and watching a movie at the beach together. Just this week, color teams competed in our annual Triton Ball, a dodgeball tournament where we all have fun at lunch together. This year, orange team won, but being on green, I definitely think it should have been us. Just this, and then in December, we have a week dedicated to Christmas, where before our break, we celebrate Christmifica together. We spend the week drinking hot cocoa, having festive Christmas wear, and then we are off. Each year, we have four to five student planned dances, where we get to spend the night together and listen to good music. In January, we have Wedge Week our annual spirit week where we rally and wear Pacifica gear. This culminates in soccer and basketball games where we go all out and support our school. We're a school of spirit. We are Triton Nation. So we're never lacking in cheering signs and the representation of our colors, orange and blue. In March, students get the opportunity to go on a trip and become world travelers together. We've traveled to Italy, France, England, Costa Rica, and so many more amazing places. We finish out the year in June saying goodbye to the seniors at the last walk, where we celebrate them for all that they have accomplished in their years at Pacifica. This year, being a senior, I have the opportunity in taking place in this. All of this is done with joy in mind. Pacifica is a school that provides students with both an esteemed education and memories to last a lifetime. We do this by the side of the faculty and the staff that truly model the way to think and live well, while pursuing the joy that is encouraged at this school. And now speaking of traditions, one of my favorite traditions is Bring the Rain. So please watch with me this Bring the Rain video.
Well, welcome. So good to see everybody. Uh, if I haven't had the privilege of meeting you yet, my name is Brandon Gonzalez. I'm the Director of Athletics and Student Life. So I want to talk a little bit about athletics and how athletics at Pacifica um, fits into this idea of ownership and opportunity and taking risks and failing forward and kind of what, what does that look like specifically to our athletic department. It's not winning together or losing together, it's striving together, competing together, competition that changes students for the better. Um, ultimately, it's the experience, it's the journey. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what that journey looks like, what some of our traditions are. I'll start, though, with what is our philosophy and our approach? What is our department built on? I mean, you guys have probably come to some games, you've heard some stories, but there's really more to it than that. And we're built on four core values, uh, participation, competitive and non-competitive success, individual player development, and overall positive experience. Now, what is that? You're like, Mr. Gonzalez, that sounds great, but what exactly does that mean? Well, I'll, I'll share. Participation, we want kids to play sports. There's value in being a part of a team. There's value in being a part of something bigger than themselves. So we have 85, 90% of our students over our five years play a sport, one sport, two sport, sometimes three sport athletes, because there's value in that. We have what's called a no cut policy. Uh, some of my coaches, when they hear that, they freak out a little bit. Um, they, you know, It's not that everybody gets the same uh, minutes, doesn't mean there's equal playing time, but it means if you as a family and a student are willing to commit to a team, work hard, show up every day, we have a spot for you. Uh, there's enough rejection in the world, there's enough you're not good enough. We want to be a place where kids can take risks and try new things. So participation is big. Competitive and non-competitive success, uh, quite simply guys, we like to win. Winning is more fun than losing. Um, but if nothing else, we want to compete well. We, we know we're not going to win every match or every game or um, you know have the, the greatest shot every single day, but we can pursue excellence in our competition. Healthy competition is good for us. On top of that, though, these are kids. They're young adults. They're non-competitive success. They're spiritual. They're mental. Their physical well-being is just as important, if not more, than what they can do in the gym or out in the soccer field. So competitive and non-competitive success is very important to our department. Uh, individual player development, we want you guys to get better. If you have goals to play in college, we will get you there. We have a track record of doing that. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. But if you have desire to play at the collegiate level and be a collegiate athlete, our coaches are equipped, our department is equipped to help you get there. And if you don't want to play at the college level, you just want to be a high school student athlete, that's great too. Our goal then is to make sure that when you come in as a freshman and you leave here as a senior, you've developed, you've built confidence either in that sport, in many sports, that along the way from your ninth grade year to your 12th grade year, you've developed as a person. And lastly, and by far the most important, is an overall positive experience. The journey has to mean more than the outcome. So one thing I tell my coaches when we interview, I'm the girls soccer coach. If I won state, if I won CIF, but my girls hated me, and they hated each other, and they hated the team, then we failed. The journey has to mean more than the outcome. So the overall positive experience is what, um, what really drives and holds that together. So Triton's at a glance. A lot of times, a lot of questions I get is like, you guys are only four or five years old. What exactly have you guys been able to do? Tell me more. Well, this is a quick kind of glance into that. We have 21 varsity programs, 21. Not one, not two, but two, one, 21. That's, that's incredible. Our students are amazing. Uh, we have 29 teams, I think that is. 29 teams. So we value athletics. We value your guys' desire to play sports. So we have Frost Off, JV, you know, across multiple sports. We want to keep our kids engaged. Uh, we have joined the Western Athletic Conference. I believe that's the next one, which is schools like St. Margaret's, Sage Hill, uh, Capistrano Valley Christian, Fairmont Prep. Those are kind of the core nucleus of our league. But on top of that, we're good. Our teams are pursuing excellence. We're competing in very competitive non-league schedules. I've had conversations with some of you guys already. You know, like girls soccer, we're taking on the Orange Lutherans of the world. Boys basketball's taking on the Trinity League. Girls volleyball, so on and so forth. So we build very competitive non-league schedules so our kids who want to compete have that opportunity to compete at some of the highest levels as well. Um, so over the past four years, there's just a little bit of what we've done as far as postseason appearances, first team all league, CIF finals, you guys could look and we have a few, you know, six or seven banners hanging in the gym, our, our programs, and more importantly, our students, our student athletes guys are doing great things. Um, so those of you that are athletes, or you have desires to be athletes, we talk a lot about size as an asset here and you'll hear more about that. Above me is a list of just a handful of the schools where we've sent kids to play at the next level. 
being a small school isn't a bad thing. One of our alumni who's a dual sport athlete at Westmont College said this, and it makes it stuck with me since, we're a small school with a big school attitude, right? Size is an asset here. So as you can see, you have Gonzaga, the big D1 schools that our kids are playing at, and then the more smaller liberal arts schools that are the right fit. We're gonna help you get to where you wanna go if you have that desire. So here's a list of some of the sports we offer. Uh, as you can see on the boy side, we have cross country, we have rowing, especially I'm talking about work in the fall. Um, what else we got? We got beach volleyball in the winter. We got basketball, soccer, surf team. I'm excited to announce that next year we're launching baseball. I know a few baseball people in the room. I see hands go up in the back. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, we have baseball. We have boys indoor, track and field, swimming. And on the girl side, we have about the same thing across the board. So we have interest. If you have interest in sports, guys, we offer them. And they're a lot of fun. They're great coaches um, along the way. So a question I get a lot is facilities. How do you guys facilitate this? Well, my team has done a great job building partnerships and relationships with uh, schools in the area, different city, of, uh, city organizations or branches of the city. So we're at Vanguard for our soccer programs. We're at OCC for swim and track and field. Uh, our beach programs are down at PCH and Newland. The Pacific Ocean is our partner for our surf team. So we're just really kind of, that was a joke, but I guess it was not funny. Um, we're, we're spread out everywhere. Our rowing team rows down at Newport uh, Sea Base on Mariner's Mile. It's all very close. It's all right here in the Newport Mesa area, but we've been able to foster and create great relationships um, with, with local organizations. Traditions. Traditions are a big deal. As you heard uh, Lennox talk a little bit about that earlier, and back to my uh, comment that Solomon Davis said of a small school, big school attitude. Guys, these are, these are big, these are fun. These are big things this school is doing. We host a rowing regatta. We're the only high school in Orange County to have a rowing team. Um, we bring up schools from San Diego. We host a, a wonderful event right on the water. We have a cross country invite. We run a Crystal Cove. You know, we have the BSN Showcase. We have Bring the Rain, which has just grown over the years from being able to do it in this gym to last year we had to do it at Vanguard because we just had a thousand, close to a thousand people attend. Um, so traditions and, you know, those are, those are meaningful and we're excited excited to invite you into that. Um, not just students, but the parents as well. Triton Nation. So that is, uh, that is hopefully all of you guys. I will leave you with this. And this is now, I'm talking directly to you kids. When you come to Pacifica, and I say this to, to some, and some of you heard this, you need to let Pacifica take you. This is a good place with good ideas, with good hopes and dreams for you students. But if you don't come here, and just let it happen. Just let Pacific invite you in and take you. If you resist that, you will have a really not so fun high school experience. How about that? You have to let this place that is with these people in this room help you find joy, help you grow. And if you let that happen, you will have an incredible high school experience. You will get to experience things in leadership, in sports, in the classroom, in the arts. But it all starts with you guys coming in and letting Pacifica take you and letting this place become your home. Um, so with that, we're going to transition to the arts a little bit, and then we're going to show you an arts video. The Arts at Pacifica is just a wonderful experience to get to know one another better. You get to see your classmates in a different context other than a classroom and athletics, and it's a wonderful creative outlet for so many talented people to come together and make something beautiful and meaningful. Coming to Pacifica, I was kind of unsure, but having this incredible program where just being surrounded by other people that have the same passion is something that's so cool. This is our spring musical extravaganza, which encompasses a total of about 68 students in the Pacifica community, and it is an explosive adventure in every single way you can imagine. <laughs> My role in this production is stage manager, and me alongside my classmates are running the whole show backstage, so it's a student-run production. I am super proud of seeing our tech group of seven people running the whole thing and catching on to the different parts of the production. We're really competitive, so when the lights go out, you see everyone like jumping up like ninjas and trying to move all the set pieces in time. It's a lot of kind of like getting like the adrenaline of the theater without actually having to memorize lines and act, which isn't what I like. What's particularly exciting to me is seeing students uh, discover the gifts that they really have and they didn't know that they possessed. During my first two years, I ran cross country and I was a part of the varsity team and I was the team captain, but 
I also still was involved in the arts and the fact that I've been able to do and be a part of so many other organizations and extracurriculars at Pacifica while still dedicating the majority of my time to arts has been an incredible journey. Since I'm a transfer, I didn't expect to uh, be doing these productions. I really wanted to do volleyball. And then I decided after the fall show that I'd like to you know, drop out of volleyball completely and um, pursue the arts. Even my volleyball coach was like, make sure you give me the show dates. Like he showed up to Macbeth with, you know, the whole volleyball team was there. I've always been quiet and kind of followed orders. Um, so it's been a whole experience having people to tell them what the next step is. That's something that I didn't think I had in me, like the ability to just step up and lead. We've come a long way from freshman year founding the arts department in which basically our only set was a couch and some peanuts on the floor. That first play, Once in a Lifetime, that we did where it was a different show every night because we didn't know our lines to now this incredible production of Into the Woods. It's just amazing to see what growth can come in such a short amount of time. This student-run production, it's student-driven, but student-driven with the best support that's out there. The experience and professionalism involved in a show like this at a school our size is amazing. I'm so grateful to be part of Pacifica because of the people in the community that we that we have. I feel like I've become the Emma that I'm striving and continuing to try to be. I like to compare it to a puzzle because everybody has their different piece and they can just be themselves. We all kind of fit in together. The theater is a place where I feel I have the most fun and enjoyment and feel closest to my other students. What an amazing place that's so small and intimate and yet has so many great opportunities for each individual to find themselves and feel at home and really grow as a person in these four vital years of their lives. Good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to tell you about the arts at Pacifica. Like everything else at this precious school, the arts are rooted and grounded in truth, beauty, and excellence. Our teachers care first and foremost about your students' well-being and the relationship that our faculty develop with them through shared epiphanies and the joy found in hard work makes our art department truly unique. Students here can study digital arts, drawing and painting, and theater arts all four years. We have a wide array of beginning, advanced, and AP classes from which they can choose. And our instructors are trained working professionals in their field, but they're also devoted to education. And it, they prioritize the relationships that they build with your students. I'd like to share a story about Andrea Smith, our digital arts teacher. Um, she is new to Pacifica, but already absolutely beloved. Um, during Halloween, it looked a little bit different year because for, for many students because of COVID. But Andrea developed a wonderful lesson plan built around Halloween. Now, the students were learning about camera work and shutter speed but they thought they were having a Halloween party in digital arts where we're learning how to take pictures while we throw glitter in the air and uh, how to focusing and non-focusing on candy and perspectives. They created phenomenal work and they felt such joy in doing it. We do have two to three large scale art shows per year that bring our entire community together. They're eclectic and exciting, and we look so forward to enjoying those experiences again. But during the time of COVID, we've been able to produce two full-scale digital art shows that blessed everyone who saw them. And you're enjoying some, some of examples of that um, today. Our robust theater arts program is designed for the novice or the expert. Whether your student wants to try something new, have a great time um, fulfilling a dream of being on stage, or whether your student wants to perform at Lincoln Center, this is the program. We um, compete 
we belong to the prestigious International Thespian Festival. We take trips. We attend state and national theater conferences. Shakespeare is a big part of our program. Every other year we do a Shakespeare play and we travel to the internationally famous Utah Shakespeare Festival. It's the only Tony Award winning theater west of the Mississippi and students study with Broadway artists. And we've won awards at this national competition. I can't forget to mention the production of Twelfth Night that just closed a week ago. Yes, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Yes, indoor theater productions are not happening. But yes, at Pacifica, the show must go on safely, responsibly, and joyfully. We did a large-scale production at Mariner's Church, Shakespeare in the Park, King Lot. Well over 30 students were involved. The entire community came together, and it was just another reason for all of us to love Pacifica. There's so much for your student here at Pacifica in the Arts. Um, Pacifica, as you've heard, is founded upon creeds and pillars of virtue and morality, and the Arts Department is so proud to be part of that. Uh, we encourage connectors and thinkers and creators, all these components of the Pacifica person. But enough talk about the Pacifica person. I'm proud for you to meet a Pacifica person right now. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you Will Carlson. Will, come on up, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Mrs. Ward said, I'm Will. I'm a sophomore this year, and I am the admissions prefect. So part of the continuum that's already been explained a little bit, um, this panel is going to go through some of the aspirations Pacifica has for us. And the first one is a thinker. A thinker is one who seeks to find the truth at all times and in all spaces. So a little story. Uh, eighth grade, a student, not me, I'm always prepared, so this wasn't me, but uh, there was a presentation for a history assignment, and this student did not do the presentation. So five minutes before class started, threw it together at recess, goes up, does the presentation, teacher says, Will, great job. And he sits down and realizes, he's just beaming, just radiant with pride, and realizes, I have no idea what I just talked about. Like, I could not tell you one name I just recited. And so I just had to relearn everything for the test that I had next week. And that's what Pacifica does really well, is it teaches students how to find the truth and learn, learn everything well the first time. One of the ways we do this is through discussions like Logan talked about, but another way is when we read a book or a passage, we read the original source. We don't read a summary of it. Obviously, we translate it into English if it wasn't originally written in English, but other than that, it's the real author's words. And sometimes this can make it a little tougher. Last year, as, a, as freshmen, you read uh, the Odyssey, and there are times when it's tough, you know, it's late after a practice, and it, sometimes you really wish, like, oh, just Google a summary of this chapter. But what you learn from reading the real author's words is the meaning he had, or he or she had, behind the text. Sometimes, like the Odyssey, it's just a great story, uh, uh, heroic, all that. But there's lessons that you learn from reading the author's real words that you wouldn't learn from a summary. And so becoming a Pacifica thinker takes a long time. It takes all four years, and it's something you have to keep working on after. It takes diligence. But by learning to find the truth, you are much more prepared uh, to be in the world and see people's words and actions as they, as they really are and not take opinion at a, as truth. And uh, one of the teachers that models this really well is Reverend Butler. He's a literature teacher, and he is going to do the next aspiration. Hi, I'm Hayden Butler. I'm one of the English teachers here at Pacifica. So at Pacifica, we're in the business of putting people back together. We want to put together the head, the heart, and the hands. It means we want to train you how to think. We want to train your affections so that you love what is good. We also want you to do things that are good and beautiful and true out of that wholeness. And so we want you to be integrated disciples, which we define as a person who pursues wholeness in personal and communal life through virtue that's grounded in Christ. We believe that the human person uh, can become whole. We believe that uh, when a person shows, shows up with their whole self, wonderful things can happen, powerful things happen. 
So at Pacifica, we're going to try and model to you, not just instruct you in this, but we're going to try and really show you how to do this. We're going to put you in the company of people who really show up in their own lives and who show up in the lives of others around them in a good way to build good things. So here at Pacifica, we want you, we're going to try to persuade you to pursue goodness and integrity with your whole heart and your whole mind. We're going to try and show you uh, how to do this and so that you're capable and yet you know you're capable of real thought, not just the parroted opinions of others. We want you to know that you're capable of profound devotion, not just a kind of shallow emoting. And we want you to know that you're capable of real friendship, not just kind of convenient or virtual relationships. And lastly, we want you to know that you're capable of fighting for something good and showing up to that fight. We want you, by being in the company of whole people, to stop ghosting your own life. We want you to show up in your life. We want to show up in your life so that you learn how to show up in your own life and then learn to show up in the lives of others around you. You learn this by following others who have done this before you. And if you want to learn how to do this, you can do this by following Will. You can do this by following Dan, or you can do this by following our next speaker, Miss Katie Kane. Hi, everyone. I am Katie. I am a senior this year at Pacifica. I am a prefect like Will and Logan, and I'm also a yearbook editor. I'm going to talk a little bit about being an ethical decision maker, which we uh, define here at Pacifica as being someone whose thoughts and actions are rooted in what is good. As you've heard a little bit today, we, we really pursue goodness here. We learn about it. We have philosophy classes and ethics classes, and we're able to you know, really understand and have a grounds and a basis of understanding goodness and virtue. This year specifically, we take a faith and culture class with Reverend Stratton back there. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken at Pacifica. It's a class where we really get to develop and discover our own beliefs. Um, and it's in an effort to kind of prepare us for college and, and for life in adulthood um, overall. We recently had a unit on telos, on purpose, discovering or you know, coming up with an idea of what the goal of human life is, if we believe that there is one. I personally do believe that there is one, and Reverend Stratton asked us a question. He said, if you do believe that there is a goal to human life, how are you making choices to actively pursue that goal? Now, it may seem pretty obvious that if you believe that there's a purpose, you want to you know, work towards it, but I feel like I was a little bit naive beforehand, and I never really paired together the idea that my actions should <laughs> follow my beliefs. I, I kind of had an idea of what I believed, um, but I didn't really know why, and, and, and I had these decisions that I was making, but I didn't really know what they were headed towards. This year, I've been able to um, kind of have a purpose to develop and discover my own purpose to make sure that the decisions I'm making are pursuing virtue and I have just been so grateful for that. I'm, I'm, I'm so lucky that the friends that I've made at Pacifica you know have the same goals and, and the same idea of goodness that I do and that they will hold me accountable and that I can hold them accountable. I, I find it something so special and unique about our school. Um, I I'm so grateful for the teachers here that, that push virtue on us, that, that help us kind of, you know, discover our own ideas. And, and I'm happy to introduce someone who I believe pursues virtue alongside me, which is Dan. Hi, guys. My name is Dan DeMars, and I'm going to talk about what it means to be a contributor. A contributor is one who offers what they are and what they have to purposes beyond themselves. In response to this, I'm going to tell you my journey at Pacifica. In my freshman year, I'm not going to lie, I was a pretty shy guy. I did not know a lot of people going into the school, so I just did what I could to fit in. In this sense, some could say I was just normal. However, what I learned was that Pacifica wanted to stretch me outside of my comfort zone, and that was thanks to the contributions of those who came before me. I saw seniors wearing kilts, students painting their chests with the letters of Pacifica during basketball games, and athletes participating in the school plays and productions. 
The more and more I observed Pacifica, the more I saw people giving their all so they could make the community around them a better place. They gave the force of what they were, which inspired me to want to do the very same. This was only possible because of Pacifica, which I believe is the land of opportunity. I felt like anything I put my mind to, I could achieve. So I started off by creating the Ski and Snow Work Club with my friend Samson. Then I ran for president. Although I did not win, the school still believed in me and made me an executive of a committee on AS. Finally, I did something I did not even think I would ever do, and I participated in this school's fall play, Twelfth Night by Shakespeare. With all these things, I tried my best to give back to such a great community that Pacifica created for me. As I looked to, as I looked to create a sense of camaraderie with the Ski and Snowboard Club, improve the school with my visions, and finally inspire others as being an athlete who took on the play. Without further ado, I'd like to bring up Mrs. Parsons. Everybody. Can we give a round of applause to my amazing team? Oh, just love these guys. So fun to get to hear from you. Thanks for sharing your hearts with us. Thank you for your attention. And I, it's so fun to see your faces, half of them at least, your eyes and your eyebrows. You look fabulous. So from, I'm sure we've exchanged many an email. Sorry if I'm a frequent flyer in your inbox lately, but I'm super excited that you're here and I would love to walk through just briefly while I have you the steps in the application process and then show you or introduce you to a little bit of what we'll do here at the end if you're wanting to stay around with us. So for those of you who haven't started or have, just as a reminder, the application process has four steps. We have an online application, teacher recommendations, an entrance exam, and a family interview. It's not intended to be a lot of steps. It's doable and you can do it, I promise. Your teachers love to brag about you and I love getting to read what they have to say about all of you students. So if you have questions for me about the application process, you can shoot me an email. You can track me down after this. Um, also this year, we are going to do the financial assistance process a little bit differently. I'll back up by saying since Pacifica's founding, it's been a part of our mission to be a school for families from all backgrounds and neighborhoods, and we mean that in all senses of the word. And so if that is something that is a consideration for you in applying to Pacifica, I invite you to apply for tuition assistance. The application will open January 1st, and will be due February 1st, and awards will be made by mid-February. If you have more questions about that, I'm here to answer those for you. But I hope that you enjoyed the pro program and presentation. I hope it was helpful and inspiring as you're sitting here as eighth graders thinking about what your next step will be in high school. As you heard from my team, we really want you to find a place that you will thrive. I happen to believe that this is a place that's excellent for the thriving of students. Um, I hope you are convinced on that today. As you have more questions, the team will be out sort of where you found them when you arrived. So. Uh, academic disciplines are under the tents, arts and athletics are sort of to the left of the gym here. I will be around. Please find any number of our team members and ask any questions you have. We're here, like Mr. O'Neill said in the beginning, because we're four students, and so that's why we're all gathered today. Thanks for joining us. Let me know what questions you have. I will be around, and I look forward to meeting you either for a campus tour or for your family interview. Thanks for your attention, and have a fabulous rest of your afternoon.